long journey and we've got one hour to go. The end is in sight. I know you'd leave me to die on the road I know you'd leave me out here in the cold Welcome everybody to another video. Thank you so much for joining us. We're not in the workshop, as promised, we have come to Wales. We've been in the car for over seven hours, driving to the far west coast of Wales. We're somewhere near Aberystwyth. Where are we? Tregaron. Tregaron. We're in Tregaron. It's been a massively long day and we've driven a very long way to come and meet some very special people. Let's get back to the hotel, get some dinner, because we're going to tab two classics in the morning to get a new fuel tank for the Tiger. Can't believe you wouldn't get out of the car, Dan, honestly. It's absolutely <sighs> really? Make me stand out there in the rain? We've got a well-deserved beer. We've had dinner. I think we're both ready for bed, no? Yeah, separately. Separately, tomorrow's a new day, and it's gonna be a good day. See you then. I don't care what you take in. Okay, we have come all this way to the beautiful Welsh countryside to Tab 2 Classics because, as you've seen in my previous video, my original tank for the Tiger project was completely rotten. Um, I've sent the frame and the tank to Tab 2 Classics and they've been working away making a completely bespoke replica in aluminium for the project. I cannot wait to see it. Also, I've got a little present for them. Hello. Hello. Oh yeah. How's it going? Welcome to Tab. Nice to see you. Oh. Tab Two Classics is run by Rich and Aline, and their new recruit, welder Tom. So, these are just a, a few of the tanks we're putting through at the moment. So um, these are finished ones. They're finished yeah. ones, ready to go out. Yeah, cool. ready to go out. Um, most of them are for Nortons because we try to batch process when we can, so we put a few together. So we had a few orders for Nortons. The same tanks. So yeah. most of those will go on there, the the wide line and the slim line Nortons. Nice. Just the amount of work in that rack alone. Oh yeah. Is, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I mean, on average, a tank is probably twenty to thirty hours. Yeah. Man hours. Just that, all that standing there. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, Very cool. And then this is the machine shop, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Again, it's just where we make all the fittings for the for the tanks or the tap bosses. And but you make all of those. We make all of those. Yeah. Really. We don't actually buy in anything other than the cap. The cap is oh, the only thing. It's all of the little, yeah, all the, the captive yeah. nuts and bolts yeah, and bits, all the brackets. brackets. All the bits and bobs. You make everything. Bits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the sort of, this is the sort of things we make, the sort of fixings and mountings. And okay, so that would get welded, welded in. in. And then this will be a screw, there'll be sort of a bobbin screwed into the bottom to attach it to the frame. To fix it to, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All these collars and stuff. This is yeah, great. This, is, this is where the, the cap rings. So they'll, they'll be welded onto the top of the tank. And then the cap will go over that. Fits to that, so yeah. that's the part, yeah, it's yeah. welded onto the, yeah, that's right. the skin. Yeah. Who does this part? Who does the I machining? Do this is you? Yeah, this, this one. Okay. This is, yeah, this is my shop. Yeah, cool. Very nice. There it is, there it is. look. There it is. Perfect. The best machine in the shop. Absolutely. Good old <laughs> Ranala, look. Oh, it's lovely. So how long has this been? At the firm, do you know? It's been in the family since about 1976. 1976? Yes. It's been, and your dad bought it? My dad bought it um, when he was working in Walthamstow um, and it moved with him from Walthamstow through to Erith and then to Essex to West Tilbury before coming out to West Wales Goodness in me. 1988. Committed then because they don't they're not easy to move. No <laughs> it came in on a sort of a, a little crane of sorts yeah um, on the back of a flatbed. So since the 70s so, he's had this and yeah. he was making tanks was this? He was making tanks from 1972 so um, originally he made <clears throat> a wheel out of angle iron. Okay. And um, and RSJs. <laughs> so, yeah. Did you make so do? I guess you did work with what you got. He worked with what he got. So yeah. he made a lot of stuff out of angle iron and RSJs. And then he found a ranola and thought, that's the one. And that's the one, especially, of course, it's really good for working aluminium. Yeah. I think the thing to note on this, what's different to a lot of people having a ranola, is the fact that my bottom cradle is a lot smaller. Okay. Than Which the general you, one. Because you're making tanks. Because I'm making tanks, they're small panels. 
and I'm getting into tight corners. So I always use smaller blow wheels and a smaller um, a smaller program. Everything's all slim yeah. to get into the little nooks yeah. instead of doing big old roof panels. You're Indeed. doing small. So. Yeah. So where did the, the lower wheels? I've spent the last two years maybe trying to develop the <laughs> sets of lower wheels, yeah. and it's not easy. Like, where did you get these? These I inherited do from not your dad. Know. I inherited them. Um, I've had to clean them up. I found them in a cupboard. A lot of them. Yeah. I clean them up and I use them every day. And I use different wheels according to the different curves that I'm trying to produce. And they work. So they've come from your dad. They've come from my dad. I he obviously them designed them or made them or modified them or got them from somewhere. They're bought wheels. Most well, all of them are bought in wheels. But where we picked them up from, I don't know. So that's amazing. The top wheel is actually so well used now. There's a dip in the top of the, the top wheel. Top. I guess it's because you, you tip the bottom or the bottom wheels have got an angle on them, they? Yeah. so you're sort of... I'm, I'm drawing into yeah. one piece mainly and also it's to do with flux line as well because the flux is really aggressive. So constantly <coughs> crushing yeah, welds I'm with crushing it. I'm crushing welds with it. I'm running flux into there. Do you think how much that's been used? to wear that down. Okay, so, so <laughs> here's goodness. a figure for you. Go on. Right, so my dad sold tanks to one guy, a trader, over 30 years. Yeah. And he sold him in excess of 7,000 tanks. Now, bearing in mind that one trader only represented about a third of his work. Oh my god. He goodness. made over 20,000 tanks. In his time? In his time doing it. 20,000 tanks? Yeah, between 1972 and 2010. <laughs> so, and then from 2010, you've carried on. Yeah. And not quite at that number, I'm not sure. Not quite at that number. We don't have as big a team as what my dad used to have. So. Right. Yeah. So, your, so, your childhood was basically your dad wheeling tanks. As a child, I used to sleep in the crook of the ramala. Comfy. Waiting for dad to finish work. <laughs> so, I think I absorbed it. <laughs> it. That's what I love about these machines. It's like it's a big old machine, but that has kind of sculpted. A career, a job, yes. a, a business, yeah. like based around yeah. this one beautiful machine. Yes, it's just nice to see these old crafts and these old skills moving on to a new generation. Yeah, he's really keen on cars. Yeah. Good. Very keen glad on to bikes. hear it. Glad to hear it. And um, so there will be a future for it. How are you finding it so far? You got obviously got a good teacher. Well, that helps. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't tried my fingers in it yet. So Tom right. actually is a natural with it. Really? So, yes, he will pick it up no problem at all. So um, that's magic. Yes, yeah, so really it cool. is, it's a machine that we're really proud to have, and we're glad to make use of it, and that it's being used yeah. every day. Every day, carrying on. Yeah. This is why we've come up to see you guys. I'm so glad that you've. Well, well first of all, I'm so grateful that you've taken on the job because I know this was not your typical tank. No, no, no. no, <laughs> no, no. You sent the photographs through. We looked at it and we thought, well, we, we can't do one. We haven't got that model. The patterns for, for yeah. the patterns for it, and then Aileen said, "Well, actually, it's really similar to a BSA." So we got the BSA patterns out, and we thought, "You know what? We can we can start with this. This is a good starting point." Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's I mean, it's very triumph now. But uh, yeah, but the starting but point the was starting point was a BSA. So I was honestly when I first took that lid off that tank. I was, and I looked inside. I was heartbroken. I, was just, I loved the tank and the origin, the original paint, the orange. I was just like, it's beautiful. The shape of it, the luggage rack on the top. It's just the character of the bike. Yeah. I was just like, I can't buy a new one. Yeah, so I'm so glad yeah. that you took it on. And what you've made here is honestly, it's beautiful. I'm so glad. You Absolutely like it. beautiful. And I guess the fact it's been made on a ramble as well, which is it's even it's better. It's meant to be. Wasn't exactly. It? Exactly. Yeah. It's spot on. So this is why I've had to send the tank and the frame section up to you absolutely is the only way to do we it we could not do it without that really we would never get the mounting points in the right place we, we just we wouldn't know how it goes so no we, we do need the frame. and have you used the original tank as a reference yes we have how yes, have, we have you done we, that we've kept we, we've made the, the sections and we kept offering them onto the tank and then again back on and then it's like having a buck on yeah, like back on the form. wheel yes exactly like that yeah, yeah. i'm dying to know more about the process yeah. where does it all start then or well, through here for okay Aha. right so what happens in here? Well, if you see here, this is all oh, the patterns for all the tanks we made. Oh, they're not paper? They're not paper. No, aluminium patterns. Right. So they're taken from original tanks, and some of these are dating back 30, 40 years, you know. So it's, I mean, mostly, they're mostly inherited. There's a few we've made ourselves, but mostly they are Terry's. So they're from, he's from Terry's days. Of, so Terry's this is, is yeah, 50 odd years. 50 odd years of petrol tanks. The wow. downside was he didn't write on them. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, I know. So I was like, what is that? You know, so it's taken us a while to figure out. To work out what's what what's and where. What, but God. Having this archive of tank shapes and tank patterns is, makes it Absolutely. a business. Absolutely. If you see this one, for example. Go on, yeah, show it through, yeah. Well, that's, that's, yeah, that's a Manx, not the classic, the iconic Manx yes. tank. Yeah. 
Um, I can picture half of it. Yeah, yeah, and this this here. It's just you without that, it's guesswork. There's even little notes. Yeah, yeah. it's all from Terry. It's all it's a lot yeah. of Terry, a lot of this Aileen. Yeah, we need to add three mil more from the sales <laughs> side. This is a Ducati TT2, which is again another racer. So replicas of the original tanks. Replicas of the original. They were damaged the original. They put one on for racing because you know, especially with those modern fuels. Best will in the world. It's gonna yeah. get dented. I'm guessing one of these is a pattern for mine. This one. Ah. See. So even though you've never made a Triumph tank like that before, never. You've kind of looked at that and thought, hang on, we've got a beer that's similar to a BSA. Yeah. So that this is the BSA Gold Star, clearly yeah. pattern. Yeah. Dug that out and we sort of thought, you know what, it's pretty close. So you can see. So yeah. Not so far not away. Not bad. Yeah, not exactly. Bad at all. Obviously, this section here is completely different. Which is cool. Yeah. I thought you'd have a press. You could dunk yeah. and push yeah. it in. No, no. Alien did it on the wheel. And the top. This is this is the top. Of the BSA, of the BSA, which is obviously uh, fat, and it's just too wide. So yeah. we've had to modify that, but we're almost there. And we thought, yeah, we can do this. We, we've made these, and Terry have made these formers over the years. So he gets a tank in, cuts it up, makes this press tool, male and a female, male and a female for each side. So dies or tooling almost. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. You got sort of the left, the right, and the top. So most tanks are made in three. We put a blank, just a flat piece in here to get the initial right. shape. Ah. Then we cut it, fettle it, and then put it back in for a final press. For a final go. All of these have got matching forms. Yes. yes. To give you that help, that start. Yeah. Perfect. Where'd you keep all those? Can we see? Hmm. Can we? We're not allowed to show you this. Are we not? Are we allowed to have yeah, a look? On, just quick, just a quick glimpse. Well, this is our press room. This, this is place where we keep keeps on press going. Tools. Yeah, it keeps on going. Yeah, it's like the TARDIS. This place. Goodness me! We, this is we a proper archive. Do oh yeah, oh yeah. We do occasionally make one-offs from scratch, but yeah, wherever possible, we try to match. Like we said with your your tank, we try yeah. to match something that we've got that we can start. But so this is a, a, a Terry's lifetime of making, it's and you've carried on adding yes. a few. Yeah, we still adding a few. We still adding a few. Vast majority of these are Terry's. This, is, this was his life, this was clearly. His life. He dedicated yeah. his whole life to, to doing did. this, did. to he making did. these tanks. Fabulous, absolutely fantastic. What a, a good on you guys for, for keeping going. A massive piece of history, I think it's beautiful. Well, yeah, we had to really. The Tom, it's great because we've got somebody young that's keen and wants to get on with it. And Coming through. Hard to find these days, to be honest. Yes. I'm, I'm the luckiest guy in the world, really, because you've got Aileen on the wheel. Who's excellent? Yeah, and we've got Tom, who's a fantastic Master welder. welder. Oh, make me look good, really. Oh, don't. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, your domain must be the what the polishing, the finishing, the fin this, this bit, and the finishing, and the finishing. Can we have a look at that? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, Perfect. absolutely. Oh, look at this! Oh, this is oh <laughs> wow! Yeah, this is where we do the finishing. So it's a satisfying job, though, isn't it? You know, it's filthy and it's disgusting, but you've got to be honest, it's you must just get filthy yeah, when yeah, you're doing I do, it. Yeah, I've obviously wear. Face bring equipment and things like that for face, yeah. Yeah, because it takes a while to do a tank, so I'm on here for a while, so you know. You're shut in here, shut the door. Shut the door, yeah, they don't want anything to do with me. No. <laughs> so this is going on a, a Norton Commando. It's beautiful welding. Yes, so this is Tom. Yes, Tom. With gas welding? Yes. Or is that, that's TIG? That's gas. Really? I know. God. He's 21. <laughs> and taught himself? Taught himself, yeah. Um, so then I'll go over it with the DA sander. I start with 180 grit, and on the 180, I'll just go over the where the, where the welds were just to get any high spots down. There, yeah. there aren't many because it's been wheeled, so it's not much to do. Not taking much metal off, to be fair. No, exactly. Especially with, yeah. Um, then I go 230, 320. Work, that's so time consuming, working your way through to, yeah. That's that's 500. Okay. And so at that point, point it's, I've done this a few times, but it's, it's so frustrating. You must get to the 500 or get to a grit and then realise. There's still some 120 yeah. grit swirls in there. So, yeah. Oh no! no got to get them out All the way back again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of that. Yeah. There's a lot of that. Yeah. Fair. yeah. From 500, I can take it onto the polishing wheel, which is over here. Which is this monster here? Now this is a. This, this is a, really is a monster. It is a monster. That's yeah. Terrifying. So uh, basically, I mean, you, I used to go through the different mops. I used to use a sisal mop, then a star mop. Yeah. But I've kind of I've done it for so long now. You kind of know what you do. So I, I know that I can go from a 500 to an air cooled, and. And then occasionally I might finish it off nice soft with a soft mop just yeah. to get a nice buff on it. Um, Love it. But to be honest, the finish I can get with this is, is pretty it's, good. It's good, it's yeah. Weak, yeah. Oh my goodness, there's hardly any tank. I know, it's crazy, isn't it? The capacity must be tiny. Yeah. So that, then again, now, now you're getting into fabrication. Because this is fuel injected. 
we've so had to make this boss. Yeah, the pump to take the fuel pump the in there. Inside there yeah. And folding all this section around, yeah. it becomes a... Yeah. Oh, thank you for the tour, honestly. Yeah, no, it's good. It's good. I'm sort of starting to appreciate how much work went into making my tank. Mm. But st to turn a flat sheet of aluminium into that, it's an amazing process what oh, you do. It, you. it yeah, really yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We have been doing it a while, but yes, yeah, yeah it is. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very good. Do you want to have a go? Can I? Yeah. yeah. Can on. we have a go? Yeah, come on. Perfect. I'll get some gloves. You seem very good at teaching. Tutoring. I used to be a tutor. Did you used to be a tutor? What, teaching this? Or? No, computers. Really? Yes. <laughs> what, well, IT? I used to write IT, write IT training courses. No way. Yeah. <laughs> working with code and programs and making digital things yeah. to actually getting dirty in the shed. And at the end of the day, that sense of achievement of, we've made that yeah. as yeah. a team. Rather all than, of us here. than just looking at a manuscript and saying, well, I wrote that sitting on the backside all day. And at an office, just at an office, office. And, and now, yeah, now I actually come out and uh, get my hands dirty. Yeah. Okay, so this is from uh, an old BSA. I recognised it as the original BSA pattern. And Triumph and BSA used to share parts back in the day. Oh, okay. Right, it's the main difference with the BSA, although some Triumphs did it too, was a centre fixing hole. So they created a hole through the middle of the tank, which you put a, a bolt through and an expansion grommet through into the frame. We don't see it as an ideal way of holding a tank, especially an alloy tank that's full of petrol, you're relying on one, one mounting bolt. point. Yeah, it's yeah. Not, not great. So actually this idea of having on your one, you've got two mounting points, actually makes quite a solid it's quite mounting secure. structure. Now the one thing that was different with yours was this here, for the knee indent, because you've got really thick rubber pads. Okay, so, so the first okay. thing to do was to actually work out how to do this. So what I'm going to do is show you how to make a side. Perfect, I'd love right, to. Which involves wheeling, welding, pressing, cutting, to so most of the processes. Um, so this one here, okay, is the gold star, and the gold star has a round badge, so I've only got the one round hole there, so yeah. I'm not too worried about that. I just want that form there, because I can see it's really similar to yours. To that, yeah. Really good starting point. It saves us hours in planishing and, and beating and hammering. And that's come from your dad. This is coming from right? my dad. Yeah, this is my, my late father's patterns. To start with, if we look at this pattern, I've got an indication here that the length of it's got to be 26 inches. I need a split that's seven inches long for my relief slot. Um, and I'm 12 inches deep, 26 inches all the way down there. Okay. So I'm 12 inches deep down here. And I want it four and a half inches down from the top. So four and a half inches here, 110 mil. And seven inches long. So, there. so that's my slot. Okay. So the next thing to do then is cut this bit away. And all that. And this bit away. In here, mind your fingers. And you're going to line up with the back edge. Yeah, yeah nice. There. Just hold it steady. Is it a proper, I don't know, mine's blunt as anything. Is this? Oh, nice. So what you're going to do is cut that slot now. Of course, a seven inch slot, yeah. So we go on to a hand guillotine for that. That'll do us. That'll do you. Okay, so now we're going to start to form the bend in the front now by moving one piece of metal over the top of the other. So take... In the other way. Take that. Just pull the two together. So you're kind of so helping if you just it. just demonstrate that one. So you're just going to push it over, over slightly. It's sort of doing that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Without kinking it. That's it. That's it. Right. Okay. And now we're going to do a first press in. I think it looks like a tank already. Hey. Yeah. We're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> Normally our tanks are polished, so because of that, we try to keep plastic coating on as long as possible. Your one isn't, so it doesn't really matter too no. much. But having said that, you have got a right-hand side, and I want the split at the top. So as that presses down, the metal is going to pull into the gap at the bottom. So I've got to make sure I've got enough metal on the front and the back that when the press yeah. comes down, it all draws in properly. Hands well away. <laughs> That's impressive. 
That's cool. Yeah, sledgehammer to cracker nuts. And I wish that was it. <laughs> yeah, done, there we go. <laughs> the whole idea of using a hydraulic press like this and these forms to make the side panels to help to start them was your dad's idea. I think people have done it before. We've seen okay. evidence of it before, but certainly it was something my dad did to get it into commercial production yeah. so that we, he knew he could make a, make a living out of it. I was gonna say, um, so it's, like it's introducing processes like this that mean you can actually uh, this can be a viable business. It can be, Because yes. you can speed up the process. There are some tanks we do, like the Yamaha TZs, RDs, things like that, that come from flat, flat metal, and they're actually all done on benders. Right. And the wheel. Um, if I do a tank from scratch that mm -hmm. I haven't got a start for, it's all done it's by all hand. It's all on the wheel, it's all by hand. Yeah. We've got the pattern, we put it onto the presser. Okay. And as you ah, see, it's a pretty good Here we fit. go, yeah. So what we do now is we cut it big. So I'm just going to give myself a little bit of guidance all the way around, just to do a large cutout. I don't need to be accurate at this stage. Right, so we need to cut out And the reason, the reason for us cutting, cutting that slot is just because we, without that, yeah. there would be just too much material yeah, there. So when we look at what we've done there, we've actually overlapped the material here. Okay, but we haven't lost any thickness to the material at all. Okay. Can I open that? Yeah, can I open that? So I'm pushing my left hand, turning in my right. Soon now, just cut the slot, cutting through the bottom layer, and keeping to the edge of the one side. Okay. And then these two bits will come together after a fine trim. A bit of fettling, yeah. And I hate to leave in the morning, but you're the reason I go. So it's not quite there. I can't give that to the world yet because there's a little crinkle in there. There. Yeah, that would disturb the world and it would cause a stretch in the wrong point. Oh, okay. Yeah. Something small like that. Something small like that. So this is where the runner comes Here in, darling. Oh, faithful. Okay, so all I'm going to do is wheel out this slot. Go that through. So we've got a variety of rods here. These are the really thin ones that I'm going to tackle with first. And then I've got a slightly thicker one here, which we're actually going to weld it up with. But that's not a welding rod like I know a welding rod. No, so that is, yeah, I've cut these on the guillotine the next door. So that's the sheet of alley, the offcut this basically off, yeah. of that. Yeah, so you cut into tiny little strips. Yeah, that, yeah. That's your filler rod. Yeah, precisely. So it's got a nice little bit. You really are working together. Yeah. I love how you don't talk. You don't, you don't need to say anything to each other. They know what they're doing. When those one is speaking, they just go tap tap, just bring it up. Tap tap down. It's just the, so tap that one up, tap yeah. that one down, that's it. if that's up or low. Yeah, yeah, tap to me means up, bring it up. So if you tap that side, bring, bring that up. side up, tap that side, bring that side up. Love it. All we're doing here, Tom, is just literally evening out the weld seam and making sure that it's going to go nice for Tom to put a weld in. This is just tack welded at the moment. So the tacks are holding it where you want yeah. it and now you're just trying to get it into shape. So there's no DAing, grinding, yeah. sanding. No, that would be crushed down nice and flat then. And so then at the very end, that would be DA'd off then. Yeah. 
just a soap solution here just to make sure that the world is actually clean I'm not too worried about misshaping it this you're stage. not no no because it's going to be pressed again of course yeah so Tom would you like to yeah go on then there we go see if I can ruin another panel for you <laughs> So I'm staying on your you're line. You're just staying on the line and you're just concentrating on crushing the weld at the moment. So when you feel it's running quite freely, just tighten up a little bit. Yeah, I do. Right to the edge or am I keeping off the edge? You can go on the edge if you like. I will cut it oversized on the edge, so we're going to cut that so away that's okay. so you don't have to worry about stretching on the edge, it's fine. But you can feel that the weld is quite manageable yeah. because it's gas welded. We have annealed slightly either side of the metal as well. So it's nice and soft, it's kind yeah. of... It's you will by doing this work hard now. You can hear it as well, you get used to hearing a wheel. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Do you want more than that? No, that's fine. That's cool. All I'm going to do now... Is that a pass? It's a pass. Yes, yeah. it's a pass. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> right, what I'm going to do now is because it's got a slight rise here. Because I've been wheeling in the same yeah, place. I'm yeah. just going to smooth that out slightly. Okay, would you cross wheel it? I'm going to cross wheel it. Okay. Let's just move all that, yeah. I would prefer to it a bit like ironing. You wouldn't put an iron straight down on a crease. You You'd come from there. That's you interesting. You move it out. Yeah. So I'm just going to pull that up across there. So now you don't want to look at my shirts. So I've got more of an even even sort of curve over it now. That's quite satisfying. It, is, it really is. It really is, isn't, isn't it? it? So smooth. Okay, what's next? Well, next is to cut this to detail now. So we cut this exactly to size. Okay. And then Final we're going trim. to put that knee recess in. Ah, the, the troublesome knee the recess. The troublesome knee recess. No, I, I was adamant we had to have. Yes. yes. <laughs> My lot. Okay, you can cut that off then. That's all right. Yeah, it's brilliant. Brilliant, do you hear that, Dan? Yeah. Okay, so if you look at that, it's quite flat. Okay, and we look at that. And it's it's a lot of shape, that. yeah. Right, so we are going to flatten out the back of this. And After then all this time putting all that shape in it? The back of it only. Yeah. Just the back of it okay. only. And then we're going to put that in. So now you're stretching edges. To I'm get stretching the edges because I want to flatten it out, and yeah. take the shape out. Again, on the back. So this is the knee recess that I modelled off the one that's in there. I need 15 mil from the bottom because we're going to put a swage in the bottom of the tank. Yeah. I need 55 mil behind. And my grandmother used to be a seamstress as well, so it always helped me with oh, uh, patterning. Right, <laughs> paper, yeah, paper patterns and things, yeah. Okay, and this is where Tom comes in because he's got the strength to do it with me. Oh, okay. Right, so just to start over here on this side. Start from the front, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's okay. it, pull it through. Some. And again, we have to work as a team with this. Yeah, yeah, keep going. Okay, slow. Okay, keep going. Even that is harder than it looks. Um, and you're working together so yeah. well. Okay. Yeah, that's one disformed unit. Yeah. Then yeah. back onto the wheel now, isn't it? Back onto the wheel to make it. Get all the edges nice. straight, yeah. Okay, and then we've got a little bit of swage there I want to get rid of. So I'm working to the edge of this wheel, which means I'm pretty much on the edge of the under one. Yeah. 
Which is why you wanted the wheel. Which is why I'm corner. off soon. Yeah, and you're off. I'm just going to straighten that out there. And that's why I use a wheel that goes straight to the direct corner. edge. Yeah, that's to the exactly why. Right, there you yeah. go then, Dom. So Bingo. you need to make another side <laughs> and a top. Okay, so hang on. So that's <laughs> taken, obviously, with me here sticking my nose in, that's taken longer than it would take you normally. But that is one roughed inside. Yeah. To make one tank for a bike, you've got to make two of these. Two of them. A top. Yep. and then a really complicated bottom with yeah. recesses for coils and everything yep. else. For this particular style of tank, you're probably looking between the three of us doing all the processes about 30 hours. 30 hours yeah. from a flat sheet of aluminium yeah. to a welded it'll, together. It'll be a welded together polished tank that fitted, tank. fitted a bike. What we, we can move on to now is actually just a quick assembly of a tank so you get an idea and it looks like a tank gone together. Can I have a go at welding? Yes. Yes, yeah. let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's enough. Yeah, yeah, that's a perfect one. I know it's awkward. Yes. <laughs> you can pull the Porsche away a little bit. Oh, already looks. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> So why has that happened then? Because I was, I was had the torch here. Yeah, well the flame's really long, isn't it? Oh, I can't believe I've done that. Yeah. Well, if you come down here more, it'll take a bit more heat to get to. Yeah, I think. Too long. Yeah. Point the torch at more of an angle. So yeah, that's it. Yeah. Damn it, I've done it again, look. That one. Oh, trust me, I've been there. It's just knowing that that metal's just about to go. That's the, uh, the whole key to it. But it's all about the torch angle. Honestly, I can't thank you all enough. <laughs> You're very thank welcome. You so, so much. Thank you for coming all this way. I mean, I'm chuffed. Like, absolutely, I'm over the moon. I cannot wait to get it back in the workshop. Oh, I'm so glad. So glad riding around on this very soon <laughs> thank you thank you very well, much well before look before i go i've brought you a little present of your own for your ranala yes this, this is, is for you your ranala lady <laughs> Ooh, thank you very much okay yes yeah, it's, it's heavy yeah <laughs> This is something that I know you said you needed oh, I for did. your machine thank, thank, you very yeah. <laughs> thank you very much indeed that's Slightly unusual for me because it's, so it's a new Ranala top wheel. Yeah. Hardened, ground polished, but I've modified it just for you. That's got these weird, super sharp corners. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> to your much. request. Yes. You can see why I use the sharp corners and now. No wrapping it up and putting it under the tree. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use it beforehand. Oh, yes. No. Get it straight on the machine. I hope it, that's dead flat. So you should be. Hopefully it helps. It's brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you. I hope it does you well. Well, and thank you all again, honestly. No, no, Perfect. Thank you. No, thank you. So. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Lovely to meet you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Brilliant. See you soon. See you soon. Bye bye now. Bye bye. Wow, what a trip that was to Wales. But I'm back. I've had a week down at the repair shop and now it's the next weekend and I've got everything laid out on the floor, including the brand new beautiful aluminium tank. Thank you, Tab 2 Classics. John has just arrived and we've got the day to try and put as much of this together as we can. But you're gonna have to wait until next week to see that. If anybody watching has uh, an old bike, a classic bike um, that wants a tank from Tab 2 Classics, please do get in touch. Tell them that you've seen this video and let them know that you've you've come to them from this video and I'm sure they'll look after you. Uh, they're a lovely team up there. I can't thank them enough. Absolutely chuffed. Thank you so much, everybody. See you soon. Wow. It's a thing of beauty, isn't it? That is... Oh,
Boom, boom, boom.